Researchers have developed a new nutrient combination that promotes a healthy microbiome development in malnourished children. Welcome to Microbial Minutes. This is ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the Feeding Our Microbiomes edition. I'm Julie Wolf, Science Communication Specialist here at ASM, and today we'll be talking about a paper uh, published in Science, which shows that the optimal nutrient combination can promote a healthy gut in malnourished children. This is a big, uh, important issue because malnourished children have been shown to have uh, microbiomes that resemble those of children. They're slightly delayed in the succession and development of the normal constituents of a microbiome, which can have effects on things such as their gastrointestinal development, their neurological development, nutrient acquisition, uh, as the bugs can help to um, acquire more nutrients out of their food, and effects on their immune function. Uh, and so this is a very large study. You can see there's a lot of authors, uh, and there's actually a pair of studies in science, and we'll link to those down below if you want to read the full study. It began with a characterization of the microbiome samples of children with acute, severe acute malnutrition, uh, and looking at their microbiomes as they transitioned to moderate acute malnutrition, and seeing that there were certain members of the microbiota that were beneficial to those children as they transitioned out of a state of severe acute malnutrition. Uh, and so they used this initial study to ask what taxa represent healthy microbiota, uh, and then further, could they promote the growth of these beneficial bacteria by giving them certain nutrient um, supplements that might be even more effective at treating that severe acute malnutrition? Uh, we're not going to go through the entire paper, but on the next page, we have two of the key experiments. Um, they first started with characterizing those microbiota, and then they moved into an animal system, looking in notobiotic mice and pigs. Those are animals that don't have any of their own microbiota, but are given a defined set of microbes which can then be tested. So uh, they started with mice, and they put in the microbes that were associated with that severe acute malnutrition state, and then fed the mice different nutrient components to see if they could promote the growth of those that were identified as being beneficial. And then they moved into pigs in order to more fully uh, represent what the, um, what the human microbiota tract looks like. You can see down below um, that some of those uh, microbes are listed along the x-axis in the graph on the lower left-hand side. Uh, and in the presence of the formula which they were able to derive, they called it an MDCF, which is Microbiome-Directed uh, Complementary Foods, uh, and it consisted of chickpea, soy, banana, and peanut flowers uh, in, different uh, in different ratios, as well as a few micronutrients to help promote the growth of these bacteria. And in green, you can see that the, the pigs that were fed this MDCF were able to um, have those bacteria grow to higher levels than pigs that were given a uh, control food source. Then they moved into the children themselves, and they did different formulations of this uh, MDCF. Uh, you can see here uh, that they used three different formulations, one, two, and three, and they compared this to children who got a conventional food source that is similar in energy density, protein energy, uh, fat energy ratio, and has the same macro and micronutrients as this MDCF. Uh, and what they were looking for is not necessarily, they, they did look at the microbiome, but they also looked at the phenotypes associated with a healthy microbiome. They looked at bone development, they looked at central nervous, uh, central nervous system uh, development and neuronal development, uh, and they looked at immune signaling. So uh, NF-kappa B down there in C represents immune signaling, which you actually don't want too much of because that can indicate that there is um, potential for inflammation and tissue damage in that, in that uh, scenario. So across the board, there's uh, on the y-axis, there's different markers for these um, phenotypes, and we're looking for either something that increases uh, in red or decreases, shown in blue. With bone density and CNS, we're looking for more red uh, markers, things that were upregulated, and it's pretty clear that that MDCF2 has the most benefit across the board there. Uh, and in the immune signaling, you can see that that the um, MDCF2 also has the least amount of immune signaling, uh, suggesting that this is going to be a really beneficial way to treat children with severe malnutrition and promote their healthy development into growing children and hopefully healthy adults. This, of course, is a big deal. Uh, not only have we characterized the microbiome, but we've actually manipulated it 
in a way that benefits human health within um, a, a given human population. And so, of course, this was picked up in a number of outlets. And uh, we'll highlight some of those on the next slide. It was picked up, um, of course, people who are interested in global health and, and nutrition and microbiome. A lot of technical outlets um, highlighted this piece, but so did mainstream outlets such as NPR uh, and The Scientist. Uh, and so in NPR, there was a microbiome scientist uh, named Justin Sonnenberg who said that this study um, raises the bar for what we should be trying to achieve in gut microbiome studies. Uh, and I should say Sonnenberg was not associated with this particular study. Um, however, the senior scientist, Jeff Gordon, who has worked on microbiome for decades at this point, um, was quoted in The Scientist as saying, nutrition is a key component of human development. And if we're trying to affect catch-up growth, we want to make sure long-term effects are beneficial. And this really highlights that it's not only the immediate after effects of having treated someone, but really watching them develop into a healthy child and healthy teenager and healthy adult, which will be important for follow-up studies of this, um, of this treatment. However, this is a very promising um, food nutrient source that may be very beneficial to children who are suffering from severe acute malnutrition. I'd like to thank you for listening, and if you want more updates on the microbiome or other things related to microbial sciences, be sure to subscribe. Uh, thanks to Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.